Take a trip around the place where you live. What do you see? What do you feel? Over 200 years ago, that's exactly what William Blake did. What happened on that trip? What did he see? What did he feel? But most importantly, what did it inspire him to write? I wander through each chartered street. Near where the chartered Thames does flow. And marking every face I meet. Marks of weakness, marks of war. In every cry of every man. In every infant's cry of fear. In every voice, in every band. The mind forged manacles I hear. So walking through the streets of London, as Blake did in the 1790s, how much of that essence of the London that he's describing do you think is still in? He described these chartered streets and the River Thames as being chartered, you know? You know? He was, I suppose, expressing the sense of ownership, the fact that the streets are owned by someone, or a river. When you think of a river, you imagine something that flows freely, but the fact that a river is owned by someone. London, at that time, was starting to assert itself. It was starting to, like, beat its chest. For Blake, he just peeled the veneer behind that image and he spoke about weakness and woe. These are not adjectives that London would use to describe itself to the world, you know? Blake has seen the London that he grew up in as a child sometimes being ripped apart by the extreme wealth and extreme poverty that exists within London. And so even when he spoke the line, the mind forged manacles, and the only modern equivalent I could see to that would be, like, say, the, the debt system, whereby you're essentially free and you're working, but sometimes the money that you're getting paid and the money that you owe every month, the, there's a disparity. It ain't adding so, up. Exactly, it ain't adding up. You've got this manacle around you, which no one can see, but in your mind, you can see it. There's also that industrial reference in there, the idea of forging you know, forging these manacles, forging these chains, you know. The Industrial Revolution, it formed uh, a big influence on Blake's work. Mm -hmm. And so, industrialization brings forth profit, brings forth capitalism, and it brings forth a desire for the material. Or taking us back to Blake's time, if you're a chimney sweep, you know, again, something we don't think about, child labor. The fact is that they were doing a job that kept the pollution, that kept mm -hmm. the smog, that kept it all mm -hmm. going. Yeah, and a, a lot of kids used to die right. up here. Yeah, you forget about stuff like that. Exactly, and that, that occurred, that actually yeah. happened. That yeah. went to build this wonderful city that we call London. How the chimney sweepers cry. Every black man church appalls. And the hapless soldiers sigh. Once in blood Jane palace walls. But most through midnight streets I hear. How the youthful harlots curse. Last the newborn infant's tear. And blights with plagues the marriage hearse. As well as painting a picture of what he's seeing, he's also allowing us to hear the sounds that he's, mm. he's encountering. Yeah, like cry, sigh and curse. Exactly. Yeah. It was also, have you noticed, how he's done a lot of capitalisation. Yeah, and it's almost like he's talking about the body of people, and so they are their own entities. Entity, the yeah. infants, the soldiers. Yeah, the church, the yeah. chimney sweeps, these are all pockets of society. You've got that really fascinating line, hapless soldiers' sighs, runs in blood down palace walls. Could be a nod to revolutionary France, to what was going on at the time, but kind of also offers this image of an exploited soldier fighting in needless wars on behalf of the palace. Again, you wouldn't use the word hapless to describe a soldier in yeah. that time. You know, these are times of empire, these yeah. are times of showing of strength, glory. of glory, you know yeah. what I mean? The idea that government could be overthrown, the idea that monarchy could be overthrown. You know, England has already executed a king a hundred years before, mm. they didn't want to do it again. I, I see Blake as being this, like, creative visionary mm. that was almost frustrated by the world that was around him. Yeah. This is a time when reason has its triumph over belief. The science of things and the actuality of things. Blake's idea that he saw visions, you know, he claims to have seen an <laughs> angel in a tree in, in Peckham Wright. He's living in the world of the seen and the unseen. Mm. And so I don't think it was an accident that Blake wasn't recognised in his life. He wrote about the world around him. He wrote about his thoughts and feelings and ideas and in some sense was a radical, you could say. 
I think with Blake, the main idea is just the concept of freedom, you know, using your imagination to free yourself. So despite your surroundings, despite the entrapments that seem to be oppressing you, he used his words and his thoughts to just elevate himself beyond his immediate surroundings. So though he lived his life in poverty, he was probably the richest man in London. It's obvious Blake was angry and horrified at what was happening to the city and to its people. This is not a pretty poem. It almost feels like a warning or an urgent plea to the people around him to break free of their prison. But Blake also saw beyond his own time. And could London also be Blake's vision of the future? A future that we are living in right now.